said it was vital to our nation's security that we provide the freedom fighters in Nicaragua and other countries with not only the means to die for freedom, but also to win freedom. And there are many ways in which a democratic outcome can be achieved in Nicaragua. It can happen at the negotiating table or by the success of the ground resistance. But one thing is certain, we must provide more effective assistance and we must lift the restrictions which now tie our hands. In Congress, and in fact throughout the world, the opinion about the Sandinistas seems to be shifting toward our view. They don't have many defenders anymore. The debate now is over what we should do about them. The program approved last year, the $27 million in humanitarian assistance has helped to maintain the pressure of the resistance on the Sandinistas. The resistance has continued to grow and is operating deep inside Nicaragua, but we have to do more to help them. As I've said before, you can't fight attack helicopters piloted by Cubans with band-aids and mosquito nets. So this is what the meeting is going to be about today, as soon as we continue the meeting. <coughs> Mr. President, how much are you going to ask for in the way of military aid, and when are you going to do it? Uh, the meeting hasn't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some figures in mind. We hear as much as $100 million. Uh, yeah. Would it be that much? There, we won't have anything more to say than I just said as we now proceed with the meeting. Mr. President, what moves are you making to negotiate? Yeah. You haven't been Larry. negotiating for months yeah. on this issue. Thank you. Are you, trying you uh, are you turning back the Contador request to wait until they have their own? No more questions. Mr. President, we've got a meeting. Three times it means it, so let's go. So, run out that door there. <laughs> as Eisenhower, they weren't allowed to quote a president without the president's permission. <laughs> Who the hell ever gave that order? <laughs> 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 Mr. Well, well, let me go on now. As you, as you hear from Bill and Cap and George, it's not just a question of giving more assistance and resume, resume, resuming military assistance. It's also very important to give the resistance fighters a training and advice and intelligence 
information that they need. And I'm sending to Congress this week my second 90-day report on the operation of the Nicaraguan Humanitarian Assistance Program. As required by the legislation, the report covers diplomatic and human rights developments as well as the disbursement of aid to the resistance. The report outlines how during the last 90 days, the Sandinistas have derailed all efforts to negotiate a settlement, have continued their aggression against their neighbors and have increased the oppression of their own peoples. One of the things we have noticed in the last few weeks has been the virulent media attacks by high-ranking Sandinista officials against Pope John Paul II and against Cardinal Obando y Bravo. We've been consulting closely with many of you about what kind of assistance proposal to send to Congress. And we'll be sending <coughs> our proposal next week. We have to supply real pressure to get their attention. And to be effective, we have to provide our help in a very discreet manner. We cannot continue with a completely overt program. We must be attuned to the sensitivities of those in the region who will help us, but only if the program is not public. Nicaragua's neighbors are not different than Angola's or Cambodia's or Afghanistan's in that they demand at least the fig leaf of non-attribution, and I think it's the least that we can do. The stakes here are very high. We've told the Soviets time and again that we won't accept their conduct in the third world, but we can't expect to talk them out of it. We have to keep the pressure on, and that's the only way to put U.S.-Soviet relations on a better footing. Between now and the next time I see General Secretary Gorbachev, that's the message that I want him to get. And now I'm going to ask Bill Casey to lead off. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Where do you want to just press it? Just spread around any place. No place, place cards. Take a seat here. Your altar boy sends his very best regards. Oh, he's just back in. Yeah. <coughs> he's back in? Back in, yeah. He's on the frigate called the Nicholas now. Yes, I know. I got that letter from him. And, uh, oh, he's so proud of that ship. And they were out hunting druggies down in the Caribbean. Uh -huh. He's so disappointed. They didn't get a one. Didn't get a single drug smuggler. They were out oh. for oh, I think two weeks. And he was looking forward to boarding, you know, and pulling your sabers. And <laughs> I heard Eddie Abrams at the Council of Foreign Relations the other night, uh, Mr. President, saying that drugs was our biggest single foreign policy problem. It's quite an interesting approach to drugs. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't exactly. <laughs> no, I thought he would <laughs> say that, but it is. Especially when you think of the Philippines. Yeah. How about the Soviet? I don't mean to minimize the interception of drugs and trying to do that, but I've always believed the only totally successful way you're ever going to win is you take the customer away from the drugs, not the other way around. It's when you get a whole generation that stands up and says, we're not going to do this anymore, then, then they're gone. Yes, yeah, well, sir. Hi. How are you? Thank you. Tamara Kreiner. Hello. Hi. My dad, Jim Mack. That is it, yes. Good to see you. Yes, well, you and I get a photo, and then we'll all have a photo. Okay, fine. Thank you. All right, come in, please. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. I just want to say this is the biggest honor of my life to be nominated. 20 years since that first day at USC and your first public appearance after you uh, announced for governor of California. It's been a long time. Thank you. <laughs> My God, that does go back a long does. Yes. Well, thank you for doing it. Welcome, Welcome aboard. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And you too. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mr. President. All right. Bye. Bye. He's been in different chairs around this table <laughs> all day long. I've never eaten this morning. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you've been here a couple of times, too. <laughs> we like it over here. Well, they don't let me change chairs. Mr. President, how are you? Well, fine. Listen, I'll get right at this, because I know I've been behind ever since this morning's meeting, too. In the State of the Union address, I said it was vital to our nation's security that we provide the freedom fighters in Nicaragua and other countries with not only the names to die for freedom, the means to die for freedom, but also to win freedom. There are many ways in which a democratic outcome can be achieved in Nicaragua. It can happen at the negotiating table or by the success of the resistance of the ground, on the ground, but one thing is certain. We must provide more effective assistance and we must lift the restrictions which now tie our hands. And the program that was approved last year has helped to maintain the pressure of the resistance of the, or about the resistance of the Sandinistas. But we have to do more to help them. You can't fight attack helicopters piloted by Cubans with band-aids and mosquito nets. As you will hear from Bill and Cap and George, it's not just a question of giving more assistance and resuming military assistance. It's also very important to give the resistance fighters the training and advice and intelligence that they need. We've been consulting closely with many of you about what kind of assistance proposal to send to Congress. And we'll be sending you our proposal shortly, and we have to supply real pressure to get their attention because I've received some letters signed by groups of congressmen opposing the whole idea of trying to help the freedom fighters. To be effective, we have to provide our help in a very discreet manner. We can't continue with a completely overt program. We must be attuned to the sensitivities of those in the region who will help us, but only if the program is not public. These are the other countries surrounding them there. The stakes here are very high. We've told the Soviets time and again that we won't accept their conduct in the third world, but we can't expect to talk them out of it. We have to keep the pressure on, and that's the only way to get U.S. Soviet relations on a better footing. Between now and the next time I see General Secretary Gorbachev, this is the message I want him to get. Now, I've got a few minutes here at least that I can take a question or two from you, and then I've got six ambassadors waiting in there. And I'm, uh, John and Bill and Kath and George will talk to you in more detail. So if you have something here for me or a question, or you want to get down to the real meat of it. Mr. President, yeah, I have a question. I mean, one member of the Senate who has supported this effort, I can't help but recall last year that. Mr. President, Ambassador Korea, well, the United States. Well, welcome, Mr. I'm Ambassador. Mr. President. Honored to have you. And Mrs. Kim. How do you do? <coughs> you and I will go over and have a picture taken in front of the fireplace exchanging our papers, and then you will join us for a picture. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I have the documents uh, here, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, welcome. I wish to convey to you the warmest greetings from my present President Chan. He has the fondest memories of visit to last year and your visit to Korea. Well, we have many happy memories of that also, and please and communicate and give him my very best regards. I shall do so. We are pleased about the relationship, and we hope that one day uh, we can see those negotiations go forward uh, with uh, North Korea, but also we are Looking forward with great pleasure to the 88 Olympics and the world getting a chance to see all the, that has developed in your country. Thank you very much for your words of encouragement. I'm sure my president will appreciate your words of encouragement very much. And we are looking forward to a successful Olympics in 1988 also. All right. We have the closest relationship. You, you and I wait here. Yes. <laughs> Before. Yes, I have been here before, and I have been educated in this country. I know, yes. And I've been to California. So. <laughs> Mr. President, yes. the Ambassador of Indonesia. Well, Mr. Ambassador, how do you well, do? Well, Mr. President, nice to see you. Thank you very much. May Mr. Sosilo. Hello there. Two sons and daughter-in-law. Oh, 
You and I will go over and exchange our papers in front of the fireplace and have a picture taken, and then you will all come in and join us. Thank you very much. from now and uh, looking forward to that and we're very admiring here of the economic progress that's been made in the last decade or so of years. Thank you for the English fellows all the people of Indonesia and glad to hear you. Well, being a Californian I am convinced that the future lies with the nations around the Pacific Rim. Thank you very much. All right. Any much? Thank you. 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 Thank Stay busy. Pleased to meet you. Yes. Where you said going to school here? Well, I am. You are here. Very nice, very nice of your country. And where, where? In Iowa. Iowa. University. University of Iowa. Be on the Rose Bowl this year. I know. Years ago, I used to broadcast Iowa football games. I was a radio sports announcer. I just found out that you're also a football player. Yes. Right. All right. Mr. President, Ambassador of Belgium, President of the United States. Thank you. You and I will go in front of the fire yep. and exchange our papers, yep. and then we'll have you come in for a family picture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Although it was much too short. It is very short indeed. Yes, yes. And rather cold. Yes, yes, yes. It was a very rainy and uh, windy day, and uh, but I was delighted that uh, I could be introduced uh, to you by the King yeah. himself. I was on my way to Washington already. <laughs> well, this is a welcome back for you. You've been posted here yes. before. Yes, I was here from 70 to 74, and, um, serving as economic minister. Well, we're very pleased and happy about the long relationship between our two countries and your country's courage and going forward with the INF deployment when there seemed to be a little trouble yes, about that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I will continue to uh, promote uh, this relationship and do my best to um, make it stronger and stronger. So. Right. But you, I mean, if you get between us, this would be a prettier picture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, uh, my pleasure. If you please do that, I'm going to give our best wishes to Mrs. Reddy. I certainly shall. I'm also from the team. And I'm going to them. Thank you very much. Very much enjoyed our brief stop there. Thank you very much. President, Ambassador Surinam, President of the United States. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Hello. Nice to see you. San Diego, President of the United States. 
So you and I will go in front of the fireplace and exchange our papers, and then you two can come in and join us for a vote. Yes. Thank you. Right. is being implemented in the country. I have a concern. I hope that Libya won't violate your hospitality. I don't think so. I think Good. we have the ingredients available to stop that and to make a good thing because we're on the same continent and we know what is possible on the whole continent. Good. So that will be a good night, Mr. President. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Wish you well and hope you enjoy your stay. Same to you. Thank you. Welcome. President, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Nepal, right. President of the United States. Well, thank you. Madam right. Fredon. How are you doing? Good to have you. My youngest son. It's a father, huh? Yeah. And my youngest son. How are you doing? You and I will go in front of the fireplace and we'll take take an exchange in our papers and then they will come in and join us. Yes, sir. <laughs> you were here ten years ago. I wasn't there with the king, uh, Mr. President. And uh, I had a very lovely occasion to meet you during this day. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were, you were stationed here, I think. Uh, I was here yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, 18, 18 years back. Yeah. 18. 18 years back. Well. <laughs> Well, we're very pleased with the relationship our two countries have. Yes, uh, Mr. President, uh, when I came, I had an audience with His Majesty. His Majesty and Her Majesty, you know, fondly cherishes their still visit here. It was a very you know, kind invitation. And Her Majesty is very eager that uh, whenever, uh, whenever uh, Mr. President will have the opportunity to visit that part of the world, Her Majesty will be too pleased well, to welcome you. We just to have a uh, fly over you know, just a relaxing trip. I remember, uh, Mr. President, you mentioned very often about the Everest, even in your television message, Everest becomes. And also you have mentioned, I think, in, UN, one of the UN speeches about the Everest. The Everest is waiting to welcome you. The land well, of Everest. Uh, <laughs> I can just look at it. I don't have to climb. <laughs> <laughs> the plane will take you, sir. <laughs> All right. Won't you join us? Thank you very much. All right. What is our team in Paris? And at the moment, I have a special message to come to you. It's better than the best. You can be here. If you have any plan. Well, I, nothing is scheduled. To, I, I get as far as Bali yeah. in a few weeks, but then have to go yes. to Japan. But uh, then I'm scheduled back here. But I shall keep that in mind. And yes. would love very much to, to be there. And I think it was today. I think the Queen of England, Elizabeth Queen, is there uh -huh. in Kathmandu. And uh, I think nobody, no president, has visited that part of the world so far. And uh, since you are historic person would like to make you a visit of history on if your health allows, of course. And then uh, uh, you know, the president that I mentioned in the mass, that is the last one to come to the that the public to the and the presidency, whatever you have done, for the people who have done, you know, he's very grateful to see it more important, but especially in the field of uh, water resources, Remember that when we visited here last time, we had a talk about it. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>